In the competitive world of fashion and luxury, one man's vision and determination have reshaped the landscape of high-end brands. Meet Francois Pinault, the visionary entrepreneur behind Kering, a global luxury group that owns iconic brands like Gucci, Saint Laurent and Balenciaga. While Pinot is often overshadowed by the more well-known Bernard Arno of LVMH, in this video we delve into the extraordinary journey of how Francois Pinot built Kering from a modest timber company to a fashion powerhouse, revolutionizing the industry along the way. Francois Pinot was born on August 21st, 1936, in Les Changereaux, France. He left school at 16 after being bullied for his regional accent. Having been raised in a family of wood merchants, he started in the business and inherited his father's timber business named Pino S.A. However, the young Pino was ambitious and knew there was more to life than just the timber trade. In the 1960s, Pino expanded his interests beyond timber, acquiring various businesses in diverse sectors. His keen business acumen helped him build a successful conglomerate, but it was his strategic decision in the 1980s that would change his life forever. He renamed the company PPR, Pino Pritom Redu, in 1994 to represent his holdings in department stores, furniture and bookshops. The acquisition of French department store Printom put a young Pino on the map. In 1988, Francois Pino made a bold move into the luxury fashion industry by acquiring the struggling couture house of Christian Dior. This marked the beginning of his foray into the world of haute couture. At that time, the luxury fashion industry was highly fragmented, lacking any cohesive strategy. Pino saw the potential to create a luxury conglomerate by acquiring underperforming brands and turning them around. He'd initially tried to enter the financial services industry, unsuccessfully bidding for a number of companies before focusing on the luxury sector. With the acquisition of Christian Dior, Pino continued his expansion, acquiring stakes in prestigious brands like Gucci, where he acquired a 42% stake for $3 billion in 1999, Yves Saint Laurent, British fashion house Alexander McQueen, and Milan-based house Bottega Veneta. He saw the value in these brands and had the vision to reinvent them for the modern era. The purchase of Gucci saw Pino defeat long-term rival Bernard Arno who had quietly been building a stake in publicly traded Gucci. Gucci's management came to Pino to dilute Arno's stake and keep the company away from Arno and LVMH. The New York Times labeled the legal battle as one of the most bitter fights in corporate history, with LVMH eventually selling its stake for $2 billion to Pino. The Gucci deal provided Kering with the opportunity to purchase Yves Saint Laurent from pharmaceuticals company Sanofi, and later appointed Tom Ford to design its latest collection. Gucci also helped Stella McCartney launch her now-renowned fashion house as a joint venture in 2001. Outside of fashion, a 30% stake in the British auction house Christie's was acquired along with luggage maker Samsonite and a ski resort in Vail, Colorado. The company continued to build the portfolio under Francois Pinot's son, Francois-Henri Pinot, in 2005. They purchased a number of companies including Puma in 2007 and the Sewin Group who owned the Gerard Perego and Ulysses Nardan watch lines in 2011. The group also decided to offload its key holdings in retail and sold the majority of its stake in Puma in 2018, retaining a minority stake and selling their stake in Stella McCartney back to the founder. It was at this point that the name of the company was changed PPR to the Kering Group in 2013. The renaming reflected the group's shift towards pure luxury goods and made reference to the Pinot family's heritage in Brittany. Eyewear was the next focus for Pinot, launching Cartier and Montblanc Eyewear. The brands, owned by the Richemont Group, the Swiss-based luxury goods company, were involved in the joint venture, opening a new logistics center in Italy to provide capacity for 5 million pieces of eyewear a year. A few years later in 2021, Pino approached the Richemont Group about merging the two companies to create a luxury company to rival LVMH. Johann Rupert, the chairman of the Richemont Group, refused despite the complementary product offerings that Richemont provide, 
with hard luxuries like watches alongside carrying softer goods, focused on leather goods and clothing. Pino had a unique approach to nurturing creativity in these luxury houses. He believed in giving designers the freedom to express themselves, which resulted in some of the most iconic collections we've seen to this day. Pino's leadership was instrumental in repositioning these brands in the market. He invested in marketing, store renovations, and strategic collaborations that elevated the brand's prestige and brought them back into the spotlight. The company's long-term strategy was never to cut costs, but rather to invest in the long-term potential of these brands. They wanted to create a sense of exclusivity and desire for our products. Under Pino's guidance, Caring expanded its global footprint, opening flagship stores in prominent cities worldwide. This expansion not only increased the brand's visibility, but also attracted a wider international clientele. Francois Pinot's emphasis on diversification allowed Caring to weather economic downturns better than its competitors. The conglomerate's diverse brand portfolio acted as a cushion during turbulent times. Beyond business success, Pino recognized the importance of sustainability in the luxury industry. He implemented groundbreaking initiatives to reduce the environmental impact of Kering's brands, setting new standards for the industry. Pino identified that sustainability was not just a trend, but a responsibility that is owed to future generations. He ensured that Kering led by example, aiming to reduce its impact on the environment by 40% by 2025, and has inspired others in the industry to follow suit. Pino also fostered partnerships with NGOs and sustainability-focused organizations to drive positive change and transparency within the fashion world. Beyond the world of fashion, Francois Pino and his family have been dedicated to philanthropy, supporting various cultural, artistic and environmental projects worldwide. Francois Pino's commitment to preserving art and culture has had a lasting impact on the global art community. His art collections and support for museums have enriched the world's cultural heritage. As Francois Pino's son, Francois Henri, takes the reins of caring, the conglomerate continues to evolve, exploring new avenues and investing in emerging brands to stay at the forefront of luxury fashion. Recently, the company paid 3.5 billion euros for fragrance company Creed, to expand into the high-end beauty sector. Francois remains the chairman of the company that had global sales of $22 billion in 2022. He also owns Rennes Football Club in France that he purchased in 1998. Francois Pinot's journey from a timber merchant to the architect of a global luxury empire is a testament to his unwavering vision, strategic brilliance and commitment to sustainability. Along the way, Pino has created a fortune of over $40 billion, making him the 28th richest person in the world, according to Forbes. As the legacy of caring continues to shape the fashion world, one thing remains certain. The influence of Francois Pino will be felt for generations to come.